What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to walk you through a very specific setting on the PS5 that a lot of users tend to get wrong. I've seen plenty of comments asking about this, so I figured it's about time to clear things up and explain when and why you should adjust this particular setting on your PS5. Also, while researching this topic, inadvertently, I came across something really interesting about some of the other video settings on the PS5, and this discovery was actually quite disappointing for me as I realized I'd been setting things up completely wrong, and as a result, I've spent countless hours playing games on the PS5 with subpar performance, and I'm willing to bet that I'm not the only one. I'll talk more about this later in the video but the first setting we're going to be discussing is the rgb range which you can find in your video output settings so by default you're going to see that it's set to automatic but one of the most common misconceptions people have about this setting is that switching it to full will significantly improve image quality. Now, while that's not entirely false, it's also true that if you set it to full and your TV or monitor doesn't support it, you'll end up with a washed out, overly bright or even faded picture quality, which can completely ruin your gaming experience and a lot of people won't even realize that their games could look much better if this setting is configured correctly. A good rule to follow would be to only mess with this setting if your TV or monitor gives you an option to manually adjust the color space. For example, on my monitor, the range 16 to 235 is called limited, while 0 to 255 is full. So if you're going to set your PS5's RGB range to full, you need to first make sure that your TV or monitor is also set to 0 to 255, as that is the full RGB range. If you only see 16 to 235 on your TV or monitor, make sure that your PS5 is also set to limited limited or automatic. Again, if your TV doesn't let you change these settings, leave the RGB range on your PS5 as automatic. Otherwise, as I mentioned, your black and white levels will be way off from how they should look. Now moving on to the disappointing discovery, a lot of you have probably gone through these settings on your PS5. For many of you, when you try to change the variable refresh rate, HDR or the auto low latency mode settings, you might see a prompt saying that your TV doesn't support these features. For the longest time, I thought the same thing. However, while browsing through my TV settings, I realized that the HDMI output on my TV was set to automatic, which I assumed was the best option. But to my surprise, when I changed it to standard, I suddenly had the option to manually enable low latency mode and variable refresh rate. It was crazy because all this time, I thought that my TV just wasn't compatible with the PS5 for some reason. And believe it or not, setting the HDMI mode to standard also allowed the HDR setting to be enabled, whereas before it kept telling me HDR wasn't supported. Now for those of you more familiar with this stuff, it might seem obvious, but believe me, I've seen plenty of people use incorrect settings on their PS5 without even knowing if that's the right choice for their display. So that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful and learned something new. If you did, drop a like, leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications for future videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one.